very commonly people prefer to process their reverb separate from the original dry signal. So I have that set up for us here. I put them both in a group. We have our helm dry. And maybe I want to add a little bit of EQ to this. So we'll just go into our frequency effects, EQ. And what I want to do is maybe put on a bit of a high shelf. All right, so I'm liking the way that that's sounding. And then we can bring on a wet track, which is just going to be our reverb. So the Boog X, it's very difficult to get just reverb, but if you go in here to the gain and you go all the way up to six, you're getting mostly just a reverb sound. So let's go ahead and bring some of this in. And you can see that I've already processed it by driving it into the amplifier. I'm working a little bit here with the pre-EQ, some of the post-EQ, and then down here with the actual reverb. So in the case of this dry signal, I might even go in and push this a little bit wider so that we can now actually bring in a version where our main signal is very stereo and the reverb is quite mono. So let's go in, grab that tool device. And now we'll work here and bring the width down to zero. And we can combine the two of them together. So this is now becoming like our wet dry balance. Actually, I want to get some more high here. And we could even take this and process this further with some of the other effects that we've looked at. Another common thing that people will do is actually compress the reverb. So we'll go in here and let's just use this compressor for now. And the idea of compressing the reverb is that you could actually then decrease the decay time. So decrease that uh, time that the reverb is ringing out so that when it disappears in the mix, in the context of the music, you'll be able to not just have this extra bit of information going on. So. Now I can go back into the Boogex, I can bring down the time. Let's try up an octave. Thank you. 